This video will be looking at rear suspension, airbags, towing. We even have a go at lowering Nicholas's YZ65 so he can temporarily ride it while he grows those next couple of centimeters. People have always asked me what airbags I run, what springs I run, what PSI I use. So I thought I'd make up a video of the three trucks. We've got the 106, we've got the Fortuner, and we've got the 79 set up. Now it's not that I'm an expert by any means. What I can offer is my experience on the years that I've been using and abusing these products. I know all this stuff works and I have been asked to help quite a few times. We tow regularly, we go off-road regularly. Now when we tow, we're towing big weights, small weights, off-road. Hey, we could be letting the airbags down to zero or we could be having air in them to hold the weight of the caravan behind us. So a few have asked, and here's the video we're gonna make. Okay, she's into it. We're gonna do the, this with the van tomorrow. So we've had a couple of 79s. The gray truck, we had the parabolic springs under it. They were the 700 kilos. This white truck I've got now, we're running a TJM 600 kilo. The airbags I run on both 79s, are a polyair dominator. Now these are a four ply rubber, they're fabric reinforced, and they have metal end caps. They can go down to as low as five PSI and up as high as 100. Now in most cases, I have the bags, 10 on one side, five on the other. That's just to compensate for the weight in the toolbox. Now we tow the bike trailer, we tow the car trailer with bikes on it, we tow the Jayco, and we tow the comp truck. Off-road, as you can see here, I want the bags to be as soft as possible. Here we're running the five PSI as recommended, maybe even a touch under. We wanna have droop. Now I've been running these bags since 2016 and this is how we've run them in the gray truck and now in this white truck. The bags in the gray truck got sold with the gray truck. I never had an issue with the bags. So even though here at full droop, they are stretching, they still do have more. I have done that test. On the gray truck, we ramped it with no shocks and I undid the saddle bolts and that was with the parabolic springs. And I know with the shocks in, I'm not getting to that full stretch point. Electric trailer brakes. We run a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. A big fuse. We've learned our lesson in the past coming down Araluan Mountain. We blew a fuse, we had an axle seal leak and we actually had a small fire inside the drum of the handbrake. And in the Fortuna too, we used the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. Now when we tow the Jayco, uh, we go up between 20 and 30, depending on how much weight I've actually got in the tray, how much water. So leaving home, we'll have water, food on board, fuel. So there I'll probably run closer to 30, and then coming home with less fuel, less water, less food, I'll probably drop it to about 22. I'm always watching and changing. This setup has been bulletproof for us. Towing the comp truck, we generally go up around the 50 to 60. So depending on what spares I've got in the tray, how much weight we're carrying, that's generally the number I aim for. Now with the Dominator, I can have around 20 PSI in the bag and still drive bullet truck up onto the trailer and then finish airing it up. I don't have to have the air in the bag to get bullet up on the trailer. There's a lot of people that are always worried about bending chassis. I feel that if I had the airbag up high and then driving the truck on with the weight transferring through the tow bar, that there's a potential for bending of the chassis. But with the Dominators, I generally run them up to 20, load the truck on, finish loading the spares, and then go up to the 50 to 60. Now over the six years whilst using the Dominators, I'm always on top of my maintenance when we're home, but while we're away, I never think twice about attempting something or doing something because of a part under the truck. The consequences are, they're there to be used, we use and abuse them, we get it home, we check and fix whatever's required. And believe you me, we get beaten from time to time. Here's one example that didn't end well. Now while we are looking at our vehicles, the little LM106, whilst we don't really tow a lot with it, I have ultimate springs under the back of this. Now I have a heavy pack in this. For the one trip a year that we do, where we go down to a friend's farm and we need to take the nearly two ton caravan from the house to the hut. It's about an hour's drive, all in low range. Steep, steep country, deep river crossings at times. And we do wheel this vehicle 
up to the standards of what Bullet may have been a couple of years back. So there is a compromise for me with that. But off-road, this spring pack may just be a touch stiff to be getting any better articulation than this. So the next coming trip to this particular property, Shell and I have already discussed and agreed on. We will be taking one vehicle. So it'll be like how we went to Louis with the motorbikes in the back towing the caravan. So what I'm going to do in an upcoming episode, I'm going to remove that bottom leaf. We'll be able to wheel this 106 a lot harder. It's going to travel more. They'll flatten right out. You can see here I've got the 79's factory to Kiko shocks underneath this vehicle. So that'll be in an upcoming episode. We'll remove the leaf, we'll take it bush, air down and see how much of a difference it's going to make. While I've got GoPro under here and we're watching this, have a look at the axle wrap we get with a full pack. So I'm going to have to think about maybe making up a wrap bar as we have on Bullet Truck in the below footage here. So the backup tow vehicle is Shell's 2018 Toyota Fortuna. It has towed Bullet Truck and it has towed the Jayco quite a bit. It's towed the bike trailer and it actually does tow Bullet Truck quite well once you're moving. It's got 150 kilowatt at 3000 to 3400 RPM with 500 Newton meters and that's at 1600 to 2800 RPM, which really is impressive against its V8 uncle at 151 kilowatts at 3400 RPM is the 79. And the Newton meters of the 79, 430 at a rev range of 1200 to 3200. It's quite a torquey little motor. It's a 16 valve, double overhead cam, four cylinder, in line, 2.8 litre turbo diesel. The gearing is awesome. It's got a six speed automatic transmission. The gearing is quite nice. It's actually a nice truck to drive in low range with the auto and the transfer case gears of 2.56 to one. Now that's a little bit lower than your LM106 case, which is a 2.28 to one. But the diff ratios in the Fortune are quite high. There are 358. So that's 43 in the crown wheel with 12 on the pinion. But all in all, when we built this thing, in my opinion, we got it quite right. On a 265 7017, which is just under a 32 inch tire, just under 10 and a half inches wide on a 17 by 8.5 rim. So the rear suspension on this, we've got TJM coils under it. So there weren't too many options back in 2018 when we did the kit on this Fortuna. There was a replacement standard height ones. There were the 50 kilo and the 215s. So these are the 215 kilo coil and they are quite a comfortable coil, even unladen. Running a TJM shock. Now the poly airs that we've chosen on the Fortuna are an in-coil airbag. These ones here are the black. So they're the ultimate series. They're a polyurethane bag and they have a capacity of a maximum at 60 PSI. So when we tow bullet truck with it, we're right up there at the maximum. The only difference with this truck, so these in-coil bags need to be pumped up to near maximum for the weight that we're about to put on them. You load up and then if need be, you adjust to suit your tow height. Just so that the coil doesn't pinch it, but they tow nice. Polyair have been around a long, long time and we've had them in the Fortuna for a bit now. The Fortuna's probably towed more kilometers than Shell's driven on it in her day-to-day -day driving. The auto makes it so easy to tow. So what I'm gonna do in an upcoming episode with Shell's Fortuna, it hasn't been off-road in a while, we're gonna take it for a run and I'm gonna have GoPro underneath just to watch what happens when you do have an airbag inside a coil. What I do hate about this Fortuna is the gap between the windscreen and the underside of the bonnet here and the leaves just collecting. I guess not much you can do apart from not park under trees. On to Nicholas's bike now. So as we see here, he was riding it at Appen, but then I went and put a brand new Maxxis tire on the back, which might have lifted at 10 mil. Now I'm no bike expert, but there is a little bit of shaft showing here. So I've had a read. If I undo the triple clamp, I can bring that shock up maybe an inch. And then we've got plenty of thread here on that back shock. It's sitting on the trailer, but the straps are loose. So it's got to be in an upright position. So we undo these two of the triple clamp and then there's one at the top here. So we've undone the triple clamps. Now what we want to see, we want to see that fork come up. We don't want to be hitting the handle grip though. We might have to move these straps. So we've got five mil. So we've just dropped that bike five mil. So I really wanted to come up as close to an inch as possible. So that was flush earlier. So I want to see 20 mil 
of this gold shaft. Perfect, that's 25 mil on the dot. We've got the exact same on the other side. Tighten the clamps back up. Front's done. We've lowered it heaps because I can't even get the fork saver in there anymore. So what we'll do for the run on Sundays, I'll have to cut a block like I do on the 110. Okay, we'll work on the back now, but I'm also going to take some air out of this tire. I'll probably drop it to about eight. It's got 15 in it. That'll give him another, hopefully, centimeter. Okay, lucky we're recording this so I know where we're at. So that's 19 mil to that first thread. So I'm assuming I crack the lock nut, I wind it all the way up, and then I crack the nut that's holding the coil in, the spring in, and just send it all the way up there too. So he'll have a 19 mil dip at the back and we got 25 at the front. Put the jack under there just to take the weight off the coil. I don't know if you have to. Just works out that I've got a support right where the jack needs to be just to take the weight off it. So with our special tools. So I think we'll go most of the way. Look, I'm sure I'm mucking up the travel uh, of the shock doing this, but he wants to get on the track this Sunday. But first he's got to pass the test. They need to know that he can stop and start. So at the moment where they're making him start off from, the ground's uneven and he can barely touch the ground. So to concentrate on the clutch sweet spot, plus hold his balance, plus take off, he was struggling. Let's get his feet down as low as we can. It's still gonna be better than the suspension of the four stroke. Now, last time I cleaned this bike, I had the feeling I may have to do this for this round. So I made sure that that thread was spot on clean. Now, if there was a bit of sand or anything like that, a bit of dirt in that thread, when these lock nuts turn, it could do damage. All right, so it looks like I can't get any more out of it. And that's probably because the jack's holding the bike up. So let's just back the jack off a little bit. We go again. Yeah, that's come up way lower, that's awesome. I mean, that's gonna hit the tire. Gonna have to undo that. And he's still got some flex. Seat height now of 710. That's to the lowest part of that seat. And the TTR, I would call that 680. So we're only 30 mil, it's dropped it a lot. I didn't measure it before I started. But he's flat footed on that TTR. So time will tell on Sunday. A massive year for the kids. They've come in leaps and bounds from the start of the year. Their very first day at the beginning of the year at the mini bike club. Nicholas was still on his TTR 90, Millie on the 110. Here's a bit of footage looking back. Christmas party and the official presentation for the second half of the year, plus the undisclosed last event, which was the Pony Express. But we'll have those results in a later episode. I hope you enjoyed this little suspension video, and as always, thanks for watching.